Oh my god, these missiles are moving so slow. But that doesn't mean that there is a problem, just that my brain is being stubborn. When I think of a missile, I picture this. Something that moves fast and hits hard. But in the X-Universe, it works more like this. Combat has a very Star Wars feel to it. Which is fine. Games don't work off of real-world physics. Everything reacts in a way that the developer wants them to act using their crazy coding magic. So if you want to use magic missiles, X4 gives you a lot of options. But Eaglesoft didn't do a good job of explaining what each one does. If only we had some kind of text box to put a description in. Either way, that is what we'll be discussing today. We'll start with the easy ones first. Dumb fire missiles. We have light and heavy variants. There is also the MK2 for when you want to hit the target a little harder. Light dumb fire missiles move fast and reload fast, while the heavy dumb fire moves slower but hits harder. A lot harder. Keep that difference in mind as it applies to every missile. The light variant shoots fast and hits with a tiny boom. The heavy variant shoots slower but hits with a boom boom. Now those missiles don't have guidance, so you will have to aim. But maybe you don't want to be bothered with that, yet don't trust a computer to deliver your explosions. Then maybe have a look at this missile. The scatter missile. Why shoot one projectile when you can shoot 12? It's a super-sized space shotgun that shoots explosive bullets the size of people. One of them is bound to hit, and if they all hit, it will leave a really big hole. While fun to look at, some of you out there appreciate area of effect damage but prefer it to have a more fiery blast feel. Don't worry, we got you covered with the cluster missile. It moves slow and reloads even slower, but it hits hard and wide. Give it a minute, it'll get there. I admit, that wasn't very impressive looking, so let's try a more target-rich environment. This way you can really see how big that blast is. As destructive as the cluster missile is, if you're going after the hull directly, then all you're going to care about is pure damage. You don't need that explosion spread out, you want it all in one spot. For that, we have torpedoes. This is the hardest hitting missile we got for when you want something dead and you don't care how much money it's going to cost you. It even has a little bit of tracking to make sure that you get your values worth for this overly expensive piece of explosive technology. Although now that we are talking about tracking and have gotten to the guidance portion of our missile catalog, we should probably bring up flares as well. You didn't think we were going to leave without seeing that torpedo explode first, did you? These three missiles, the Guided, Heat Seeker, and Smart, are fairly similar to each other. The big difference between the three is how they handle tracking and flares. Guided missiles first need a lock to fire and will get countered by flares. I will destroy you! Here you can even see that it is locking onto the flare instead of hitting the target. Heat seeker missiles don't need a lock and hit harder, but flares will still give them a lot of problems. Smart missiles don't need a lock, don't care about flares, and will even find another enemy to go after if the target is destroyed. All that tech does leave less room for the warhead, so it doesn't hit as hard, but it's no pushover. It'll still get the job done. Now there is an upgraded version of the guided missile, and that is the Starburst. The only change is that it hits harder, so think of it as a Mark II, but there is really only one reason that you would use it. Because you want the biggest explosion possible. Now you know why it's called the Starburst. There is no light version of the Starburst, and honestly, I have no idea why. There is one last explosive missile we got, it kinda does its own thing, and that is the Swarm Missile. It's sort of like a smart missile that shoots in a volley of eight, but they are not flare-proof. Also, they get in each other's way, so I would save these for the bigger targets. We got three more missiles to go over, and they all share a special mechanic where on impact they disable the travel drives. First up is the EMP. 
This thing does no damage but moves crazy fast at 57 kilometers a second. You can't even see it, it moves too fast. Hit a target trying to get away in travel mode and now it's a sitting duck. All you pirates out there, you're gonna love this one. Next up is the Interceptor. While it can disable the travel drive, because it has high speed and maneuverability, it's a good anti-missile missile. If you are using turrets for missile defense, this could be helpful. But it also fires in a volley of five, making it harder to shoot them all down, so it's a very good anti-anti-missile missile. And unlike an EMP, it deals solid damage. This is just a great missile. It's my favorite. Lastly, we have the Disruptor Missile, which... exists. One of them has to be the worst, and it's this guy. It hits the hardest of the three, but has a short range, low speed, can't turn, it's just bad. Maybe there is something about it that I am missing, but I can't recommend this one. There are four missiles that you can only get in split space. Scatter, Interceptor, Disruptor, and Starburst. So you will need the DLC to use them, but the rest you can find anywhere. Because of the limited ammunition, missiles will rarely be your primary weapon, but they are fun to use, so try them out. You might end up really liking them. Because in the end, that's all that really matters. Being efficient is fine, but don't let it get in the way of fun. This is a game after all. But before we go, if you liked the video or found this helpful, please give a click to all the good buttons at the bottom and share so that more people can see it. Until next time. Fly safe. Oh, critical.